bringing the people behind our food to life. So how healthy are the oceans today? Well, we've seen with some major studies of, of the U.S. oceans in the last several years, the Pew Commission and the U.S. Ocean Commission both found the same thing, that the oceans are in dire straits, that we basically overfished, we've polluted, we've damaged habitat, we've uh, taken animals out, we've changed things, and I add to that climate change and you've lost kind of the natural resilience in some of these systems. It's, you know, been done on our watch in the last 50 years or so with industrial methods of fishing and fish farming. And we're, we're in some serious trouble. We're almost at a tipping point of, we could lose most of our wild stocks by 2048 is the project, projection of some scientists. If we continue where we're going, we could see a, a total collapse of fish populations. How short-sighted of us. <laughs> you know, yeah, I think, I, it depends who you are and, who, and where you are in the world as to whether that's really true. So for some, some fisheries management has been very short-sighted and some saw where it was heading and stopped and said, let's do this differently. So Alaska is a really good example of that. So in Alaska, they were intensively fishing for salmon. They, they knew that salmon would come back to the river where they were born and they would put their nets right at the mouth of the river and catch every fish. Well, eventually someone said, hey, wait a minute, don't they need to get past you to get back to the stream, to have babies, to start this all over again? Aren't you gonna, in the end, cut off your supply? They're like, you're right. And so they changed. And so instead of catching every last fish, they said, let's let some fish get by. Let's figure out how many that needs to be. Let's get some scientists in, let's figure out. And now they watch and they, they don't fish right the mouth of the river and they have helicopters and they have spotters and they have people that say, 50,000 salmon need to make it past you to get to here for next year and in this area. And so they did see that they were coming you know, to a brick wall and they stopped. Unfortunately, in other places, they haven't learned the lessons of the past and they continue to make those kind of mistakes. Sometimes we just don't really know enough. We don't understand enough about the complexities of the ocean. Like land systems are very simple. If you go to Africa, you have grass, a gazelle, a lion. Very, very simple food web. And it'd be really simple to figure out what would happen if you took away some of those things. Take away the lion, explosion of gazelle, no grass. In the oceans, it's so intermingled that we, uh, we don't really understand what the consequences are of removing some of these pieces. And what we get some very surprising results sometimes. So it's really a lack of understanding of how this functions. There's probably really now no part of the ocean apart from the very deep sea that we haven't exploited and maybe around some some seamounts but on the whole we've pretty much discovered every last hiding place for fish the vessels now are so sophisticated with the fish finders and they can go out you know for for days on end weeks on end if they need to in some of these factory trawler ships so I don't really think there's any part of the ocean we haven't exploited. What we've done is we've continued to shift the kind of species. So we get to the end of one thing and then we've created a market for something else and we've created a market for something else. And we're, so now the fish that we wouldn't consider eating, we're eating. The problem is that the species that live in colder, deeper water tend to have much longer lifespans and tend to have a lot less, off, off, less offspring. So take an animal like a spiny dog shark or any shark Sharks uh, mature really late in life. Um, if a shark lives to be 60, it might only might take until it's 20 years old to be sexually mature. And then we'll have maybe one baby at a time, maybe two. A fully mature shark might have six offspring. It depends on the species, but they have very, very low reproductive rates. And they live a long time. They're kind of like us, as opposed to a fish that would spawn a million eggs. Of course, many of those would get eaten, but the more eggs you lay, the more there's, there's going to be. So we've got to the point now with some of these fish where we're, we're choosing animals that live to be as, as old as us. And they reproduce late in life, and we're catching them younger. We're not giving them opportunities to reproduce. So the fish that were plentiful, like sardines and like skipjack tuna and some of these smaller animals, they tend to be, um, you know, they'll, they spawn a lot, they'll reproduce a lot. And it, it's kind of, it ought to be hard to overfish them. We've done a really good job of trying, but we, we ought to not be able to overfish them.